Hello Jason, February 12th. Loved your video on the top 10 list of why we love lists. Very good. In an email, you asked me to make a top 10 list of places I have either been or would like to go and see. Uh, that is a huge question, kind of like, what's your favorite movie out of the millions of movies that have ever been made? So next week, you can look forward to that list. But this week, we have a praise. It rained. For three straight days, it rained. And that has been an answered prayer, as California is in a declared emergency state of drought. Because of the rain, I thought we would do a little video on water, which is one of my favorite things to play in. I love drinking it, and you know, it helps keep us clean and things like that. 71% of the Earth's surface is covered in water. 96.5% of that is the oceans and the seas, which is mostly salt water and good for transportation and tides and things like that, but otherwise useless for us to be drinking. That leaves us with 2.5% water left. That's the fresh water that we have left to us. A lot of that, almost half of that, is uh, held up in the glaciers in the North South Pole and in Greenland and things like that. And the rest of it is groundwater and water that you'll find in your rivers and lakes. Dihydrogen monoxide is a fun scientific term for water. It's Di for two hydrogens, and mon for one oxygen, H2O. Those elements are very commonly found, but it's also a closed system. We're not getting any more water, and we're not losing any water. All it does is change forms. It'll freeze, it'll melt, it'll evaporate, and then rain down again. All of our water in the world is the same water we've only ever had. It's, we're not making any more, and we're not losing any. With that being said, we could actually exceed the demand of water that we have supply for. America alone uses 385 million gallons of fresh water daily. That is more than 100 gallons per person living in America. The large majority of water that people use every day comes mostly from flushing your toilet. Water is incredible and absolutely essential to life. In fact, when we're in outer space looking for other possible planets that we could inhabit or that we could find other life on, what we look for is what we call the, in, the habitable zone. The habitable zone of any planet is determined by the heat of the star and the distance from the star that the planet is. If you're too close, all of your water would be evaporated. If you're too far, it's all frozen. So it's the perfect line that the planet can orbit in the middle where you could find water in all three states. Enough about the science stuff of water. We all know that my favorite parts of water are not the scientific -y things, but the things that you can do playing in it. Jason, you've been on a whitewater trip with me, and I have that photo here. This photo is taken on the Arkansas in Colorado. At that moment, the water was flowing at around eight or 900 CFS. I also have some videos of the Arkansas, Jason, the same river you were on when it was at 3,500 CFS. This isn't the same section you were on. This is three rocks. It's a little bit further up. I don't think you did it, but even if you did, you would have seen it at 800 instead of 3,500, where these people have seen it. Now, what you're gonna see is people trying to avoid the hole in the very middle. The two right ways to go are to the right and to the left, but never down the middle. In this this is why. CFS is cubic foot per second. It's a measure of volume of how we measure water. So I did some math. One gallon of water is 8.34 pounds. One CFS of water, on the other hand, has 7.48 gallons in it, which means it weighs 62.38 pounds. We have a small creek over here that we like to kayak down or raft. You can do either. But when in low waters, it's at 42 CFS, which is not that m That creek is Spanish Creek. When it rained for three days straight, instead of 42 CFS, it was 472 CFS. But even at just 42 CFS, that actually means that 2,619 pounds of water was passing through that creek every second. When the creek jumped to 472, 29,443 pounds of water every single second. But just knowing how many CFS is going by doesn't actually tell you how dangerous or fast or strong the river is. It also has a lot to do with how much water you typically find in the river. The Klamath in Northern California is where Stacy and I will be this summer. Uh, it ranges from anywhere from 1,500 CFS at low water all the way up to 15,000 CFS. You have to know the river that you're on and the sections that it's in, all right? Because water can be compressed in order to be faster and more violent, or it can have a high gradient where it'll drop quickly all the sudden and sometimes even a waterfall. That's all I have time for today, Jason. I look forward to seeing your next video.